On today's episode, Ryan and Carlina head to the mountains Ooh. in the all new <laughs> 2020 Toyota Highlander. It's coming up right now on Driving Sports TV. Welcome back and thanks for watching. In this video, we have the all new 2020 Toyota Highlander with the new dynamic torque vectoring all wheel drive system. If you wanna see how this system compares to other Toyota systems, be sure to check out our Toyota all wheel drive explained video. I'll link it uh, right here on YouTube. Also, while I have your attention, please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't already. Now let's take a look at the 2020 Toyota Highlander. One of the most eagerly awaited crossovers for 2020 is the all new Toyota Highlander. The model we're testing today is the Platinum All Wheel Drive Edition. Prices you see it here, 51,112 US dollars, including destination and the special moon dust exterior color. Note that we requested this vehicle to come with Blizzak snow tires and the price for those are not included in the overall price. Under the hood is a 3.5 liter V6 that is carried over from last year's model. It makes 295 horsepower and 263 pound-feet of torque. The only transmission option with this engine is an 8-speed automatic. Power goes to all four corners thanks to Toyota's optional dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive system. This setup features a pair of clutches on either side of the rear differential to proactively push power side to side for better performance and handling. EPA rates this setup at up to 27 miles to the gallon on the freeway and 20 in the city. In the back, you'll find ample cargo room for even larger families with up to 16 cubic feet when all the rows are up. Under the floor is storage for a cargo cover as well as some tools. Fold the third row down for 48.4 cubic feet of storage. With all the rows folded flat, you get a maximum capacity of up to 84.3 cubic feet. With all the rows folded back in place, we can now see just how well a six foot one adult can fit. And as you might expect, the third row is misery. Not only is it cramped, a park bench is about as comfortable. One nice feature for passengers is the available panoramic sunroof, which does let in a lot of light even to the back. The captain's chairs in the second row are actually quite nice, with available window screens, a folding armrest, climate controls, heated surfaces, and both USB and AC power. You can even slide and tilt the seat for maximum comfort. Of course, beverage holders are aplenty. Up front, the redesign is quite remarkable. Toyota has extended its use of premium materials throughout the cabin for a near luxury experience. Even the infotainment system is a large, bright 12.3 inch touchscreen seamlessly integrated into the dash. The driver's seat features all the power adjustments you probably need with memory to accommodate up to two drivers. This is a thoroughly modern update from the power start button to the gauge cluster to the really nice use of interior materials. The new Hyundai Palisade might have raised the stakes, but this new Highlander makes it clear that Toyota is not aiming for second place. A physical volume knob as well as heated and cooled seats aren't exactly big news, but it is still nice to see those here. Being an upper trim level, of course, our Platinum is loaded with safety tech. It has pre-collision with pedestrian detection, blind spot monitor, parking assist, rear cross traffic alerts, adaptive cruise control with lane tracing, power tilt mirrors, and a full surround view system with a very interesting 3D viewing mode. Don't want all the features? You can disable them as you like in the gauge cluster. For navigation, freestyle voice commands are supported, which is pretty handy. Find the nearest Starbucks. Showing results for Starbucks. Select the one you want. Say next page for more items. Number two. Sound pumps through the upgraded JBL speakers, which are loud enough to block out the kids in the back. Wireless charging is available for mobile devices, but the Highlander doesn't support wireless CarPlay, so you'll still need to plug in a USB cable to get access to mobile features. CarPlay is nicely rendered on the large screen with good color and resolution. Android Auto and Alexa are also supported. You probably noticed that this is a huge display. Thankfully, Toyota does allow you to move the pop-up to either the left or right sides, which is good. 
because the right side is a bit of a reach for shorter drivers. The secondary panel can be configured with a number of different screens. The Highlander has two driver configurable drivetrain options. The first is the drive mode. This adjusts throttle and transmission response to optimize for economy, comfort, or sporty driving. The second control system manages the all-wheel drive setup. This alters power distribution as well as traction systems to optimize it for various surfaces. Let's try a quick test where I'll drop the throttle and see how it responds on a slippery surface. First, normal. You can see the soft suspension squat in the back, with front wheel spin minimized thanks to the traction control system. Now with mud and sand mode engaged, traction control is disabled and we get a lot more spin up front, but still not much action from the back wheels. This is the most aggressive setting, so I did hope to see more power in the back. Finally, rock and dirt. The results here look very similar to mud and sand, but technically it does have more traction control engaged. Let's see how some of the competition does with the very same test. With other systems, you can really see the power going to the back. In this particular test, Toyota always seems to be a bit more conservative. Will this cause a problem for the new Highlander when the going gets more challenging? We'll find out soon enough. On regular streets, the Highlander is quite nice to drive, with plenty of power and a ride that, though a bit soft, is quite appropriate for the class. Though not as evident as Acura's SH all-wheel drive system, the Highlander's dynamic torque vectoring system uses a similar dual rear clutch design to push power to the corners. This not only helps with traction on loose surfaces, but it also helps rotate the rig around corners. But where the Acura literally steers the MDX with power, the Highlander is far more subtle and simple with its power application. The result is a competent, but not thrilling ride through the corners. Now that I've picked up Carlina, my co-driver for the uh, episode, <laughs> Hello. we're going to try a zero to 60 to kick things off. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and basically just stop the car. I'm going to put it in sport because why not? Um, complete stop. Road's a little moist. Three, two, one, and go. Everything shifts yep. back. Whoa. 50 and 60. Pretty quick. Yeah, how did that feel to you compared to the Forerunner that we were just in? I had a bit more get up and go to it. Um, yeah. Definitely got to 60 quicker. Yeah, it was definitely quicker. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that I think was interesting about this is that um, it had more high end torque, but it really seemed to lack in the mid range. It's like this one, you had a little bit of go, and then as it went yeah. there, uh -huh. the power. So the power curves are completely different between yeah. the two vehicles for better or for worse, uh, because it's interesting. You look at this vehicle and it gets more horsepower than the 4Runner mm -hmm. with a smaller engine. It gets better economy because it also has an eight-speed automatic versus the five-speed in the 4Runner. So I know a lot of people are gonna be considering, you know, should I get the more classic off-road or the 4Runner or should I look at the newer, cooler Highlander? Well, that's that's a real personal decision, mm -hmm. I think, that some people are just gonna, you know, you're gonna have to drive both, essentially, because there's such different yeah. creatures. I mean, like this one, how does this feel compared to the 4Runner to you? Like the seats? It's. <sighs> It's a little bit more like luxury feel yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the leathers. Yeah. I mean, it's where nice. the Forerunner, they've just taken it, they've just added more stuff yeah. to the same basic yeah. structure. This one is an all new design for this mm -hmm. year. So they, they had a chance to put integrate a very large touch screen. Uh, and they have something cooler than the Forerunner, and that is adaptive cruise control with lane tracing. So uh, this is a big deal because a lot of car makers are adding like, some of them are adding the adaptive cruise control. Some of them will just have lane detection where it just warns you that you're exiting the lane. This mm -hmm. one, it's actually like a entry level semi-autonomous mode. I'm gonna go ahead and just put it into <laughs> autopilot. It says radar cruise control active. I hit set, I set my distance and boom, the car is going to drive itself. And it just doesn't drive itself wherever it wants to go. It's actually staying in the middle of the line. I mean, we're going into mm -hmm. a corner and it's steering itself just fine. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that because I feel like a lot of the other vehicles we've 
you know, test it out. It's just kind of swerves back. Yeah, and kind forth. of bump, it, it kind bumps of pulls. on the corners and this, stuff. It's like you're driving it. Actually, it's better than you driving it. It's hey, nice now. and straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Of course, this is a three row family crossover. It competes directly with like the Subaru Ascent. Um, you could also say it competes with the Grand Cherokee. That would be a, a big, more expensive kind of competitor. Um, anything where you know you got three rows and you want to do a little bit of adventuring in it. Unlike a van, however, this actually has reasonable ground clearance and, of course, torque vectoring all-wheel drive. Uh, so, hey, look at this, some snow. Right. So, to get this properly configured for snow, um, all I have to do is drive because it has computers that will detect that it's getting slip and it'll adjust as necessary. Unlike the Forerunner, where you have to put it into four high, which you can of course do while driving. Mm -hmm. I always just do it stopped because of habit, I think. <laughs> um, and sometimes it can be a little hard to jam in if your gears aren't perfectly aligned, but here nor there, uh, this one really is, you know, it's all about doing everything for you. Now, when things get a little bit trickier, we do have some options. Uh, down here, they've included a mud sand and a rock and dirt mode. What those do is they adjust the all-wheel drive system and the traction control systems to better either give me less traction or more traction as the surface demand. Uh, mud and sand is really about allowing some wheel spin so you can get momentum, and rock and dirt is about reducing wheel spin uh, so that you can really you know, vector that torque and get out of trickier conditions. Beyond that, of course, we have standard drive modes, normal and sport and eco, uh, but, you know, eh, it's just adjust the throttle uh, response it's, and the transmission response. It's not a big difference. It's not like this has adaptive suspension or ride height adjustment or anything too terribly fancy. <laughs> Looks like the weather is cooperating. We got snow tires, we got snow, we got a mountain. I think we're gonna have some fun today. It's gonna be great. Oh yeah. <laughs> So heading into the mountains here, we have, uh, we can feel what the suspension's like on this. Because we got lots of potholes here. Uh, it's like driving the Jersey Turnpike. <clears throat> Except we'd be doing 80 on that. Oh, somebody flipped. Oh, no, the snowmobile. Snowmobile, <laughs> poor snowmobile. Derek. Okay, yeah, I'm feeling the, uh, the suspension's actually pretty good on this. Yeah. I mean, it feels, I expected a lot more like roughness, jarring. jarring like, yeah, oh, they've done a really good bad. job with uh, tuning these things, I think. Mm -hmm. Now this is kind of a biggish rig, so you know we don't want to get too crazy with it in the <laughs> snow. Uh, but uh, keep in mind we have snow tires, so we are equipped for this. And snow tires are a lot more than just a tread pattern; they're actually a different compound. Uh, the purpose of which is that they'll actually still stay um, pliable in cold temperatures. Okay, now we're gonna run into the S-curve. I'm gonna put it on mud and sand, which disables traction control, floor it. And yeah, I can feel a little rotation back there. It's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not like, you know, a rear bias vehicle at all, but it definitely gets a little bit more power back there than it would give in the normal Toyota system. By the way, it's telling me lane detection uh, that I was going outside my lane. <laughs> I'm like, why? What why lane? <laughs> I think everybody, because of, uh, current pandemic concerns. Mm -hmm. Everybody's out trying to they're find something to do that doesn't involve people. Or they're scouting their new uh, situ like Oh yeah, where area. they're gonna hunker down. Yeah. <laughs> when the zombie when it apocalypse all ends, finally I'm going comes. to the mountains. Yeah, every time you read one of the news reports about like they're working on a cure and all that, do you do you have these like movie flashbacks of <laughs> that's how you create the zombies. I know. Hey, wait, you were like That's in true. Z Nation or yeah, something I'm like, like that. Yeah, I'm like, I'm more familiar with being the undead though. So, <laughs> I mean, I'll for, be for really For those who good don't know, uh, Carlina is a stunt woman and she's done a lot of work in, what was it, Z Nation? Yeah, I Z think. Nation. Yeah. It's super fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, we cannot include a clip of her getting her head blown off I in can't. this episode. Yeah. You'll you just have, have to have search to that. Yep. <laughs> so look it up yourself. <laughs> yeah, here we go worse it gets, which is awesome. <laughs> Just what we want. Okay, so it looks like somebody else has been up here before yeah. us, so we can see what tracks worked and which ones didn't. We don't have a lot of snow here. We're looking at mm -hmm. probably, what, what would you say, how many inches? Like 
two? Oh, or two, maybe three. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so to prep this vehicle, all we're going to do is put it into, I don't know, you know, this is where <laughs> whatever I do, you guys are going to complain. Like the internet is going to say you did the wrong setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, How about we do both? We could do both. Because then... Then we have to film both. We're going to do um, the bottom half with both modes. And then we'll okay. pick the best mode to complete the rest Perfect. of the course. Okay? Great idea. So for this first one, we're going to do mud and sand, which I would say is the wrong mode because this is going to uh, induce wheel slip to keep mm -hmm. momentum. I don't think this is that difficult. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, we have to talk about conditions. We're looking at about a couple inches of snow on top of rocks. This new Highlander has, uh, I think it's eight inches of ground clearance. Mm -hmm. So that should be plenty for this. Uh, we shouldn't have any problems. I'm a little concerned about the overhang on the front and the back. This is two and a half inches longer than the last year model. Uh, so let's we'll see how it does. Here we go. <laughs> and away we go. Already a little bit of problem because it wants to wheel spin. Uh -huh. um, so I have the gauge cluster up here with the uh, the gauge cluster has been set to show me the all-wheel drive status, and it is showing me that it's putting even power to the front and the back the whole time. It also shows me that collision mitigation and traction control are currently turned off. Whoa! Oh boy! Bouncy. <laughs> Big rocks. Right off the cliff now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is a cliff out there. Mm -hmm. um, in case anybody was curious, we do have some small trees. I don't think they'd save us, but you know. They're there. <laughs> of course, the whole idea here is not to necessarily show uh, whether it can or cannot make this hill. We mm -hmm. know it can make the hill, uh, especially with the blizz axe on it. It's yeah. really going to be a matter of showing how the all-wheel drive system responds in these conditions. And these are rough, uneven, with power not on all four wheels mm -hmm. all the time, uh, on an incline, which these are all things that make are, are problematic for some vehicles. Okay, I'm showing slipping there and there. It locks them down, redistributes power, no problem. So it's doing just fine, even in mud and sand mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and back down, which is always a little weird. Uh, we have a lovely surround view camera there, although all the cameras are dirty, so yeah. <laughs> impossible to see anything. Now this does have hill descent control, which I can turn on right now, and it'll do it in reverse. And it's maintaining, oh, that's actually really good. It's about one, two miles per hour, something like that. Uh oh, oh, boy. Uh oh. Maybe I want to keep my foot on the brake, though. Yeah. <laughs> Don't really want to run over your no, camera. No, no, that would be awkward. Okay, we're mostly down the hill. Now let's go ahead and see how it does the same thing, but this time we're going to put it into rock and dirt mode. Okay, stop there. Rock and dirt. Turn off hill descent control, and away we go. Now, as soon as I go into rock and dirt, it re-enables traction control. It re-enables collision mitigation. Um, hopefully we won't need collision mitigation mm -hmm. out here. <laughs> See the power shifting yeah. around. You got slipping there and there, yeah. immediately shuffles it. So far, it's not feeling that much different. Now, one nice thing about this versus the Subaru Ascent is that this has an eight-speed automatic transmission. The Ascent uses a CVT. Um, this is just better at low-speed crawling, I think. You're, mm -hmm. you're less likely to overheat the system, according to reports. I've never had a Subaru overheat on me, but I've heard people say that the CVT can. What's the truth? Somewhere in the middle. Now I'm purposely going fairly slow because I don't want to crunch the nose. I also really want to see this all-wheel drive system do what it can do. So I'm just going to stop here, which is okay. usually a bad idea. Sure. So let's um, <laughs> Like I learned see, last time. Yeah, right? <laughs> let's see what it does for power. Okay, slip, slip. Ooh, it did three. It put brakes yeah. on three tires to give power to the one in the back, uh, back passenger mm -hmm. side. Both modes did it a little differently. I think um, I'm gonna just keep it in uh, rock and yeah, dirt for the rest of it. It definitely seemed better. to work a little mm -hmm. bit better, yeah. Although, again, for this incline, you could probably do either. Now, there are some large boulders on the right. 
which we want to avoid because mm -hmm. even though we have uh, snow tires on this, we are rolling 20 inch wheels, which are huge <laughs> yes, for off-roading. <laughs> Don't really want to scratch them. So I'm staying to the left as much as possible. I still want to lift that back rear tire up though and really feel, yeah, I want to see that power <laughs> shift around. Come on. You got this. Woo. <laughs> And there we go. Did it. Is it the greatest in the world? No. Is it good enough? Well, absolutely. Now the question is, where do we go next? So we have finished the first portion of our trek. And now we want you guys to decide where we go. So we are actually just going to sit here and wait <laughs> until we get enough comments to tell us where we're going to go. Exactly. So we have option A up there. Yep. That was where I took the um audi what was that the audi q3 last was up that road you can see we have a lot more snow today yep. and then this one that's the way we've been in the last couple of our videos yep so that's uh we took the stuck. toyota rav4 and the forerunner went up there mm -hmm. and then why don't you tell them about the third option the third option if we head back down the mountain and we're going to go and then back up another mountain yes exactly <laughs> but we're gonna head towards a reservoir area we may or may not be able to even get in there we don't know because there might be too much snow but anyways we want you guys to decide option a b or c you said you wanted to go where we took the RAV4 and the forerunner mm -hmm. so we're gonna do just that question is, are we going to get any further than we have with either of those vehicles in totally different weather conditions? Uh, if we can get further, uh, the idea here is that at the end of this route is a creek called Mine Creek. If we can get there, we can enjoy the river, and then we will consider ourselves a success, I think. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the very first obstacle that we have to do here is one of the most challenging on this entire route. It is this like very steep climb with a waterfall to the left. Um, I'm a little concerned about the wheelbase on this scraping on the underside. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it into rock and dirt because we're definitely on rocks. Yes. Um, no dirt, but snow. A little bit of slipping. I'm going s incredibly slow. So yes, I might stop. But the point here is that I need to be really careful of high centering because if we do that, we're going to need to call a tow truck. Yeah. Or uh, my buddy who I have on call <laughs> with his F-350. Hitting the crown, oh, cutting that power, moving it around. It's doing a good job, actually. Uh -huh. I mean, really, the, the surging is really my fault. And the fact that it doesn't have a low range. Actually, can you pop out and just see yeah. how close are we on the, on the crest here? Yeah. How are those uh, wheel flaps, those mud flaps? They still have some clearance. Okay. This is kind of a big vehicle to take out here. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so close that the parking radars are going off. Yeah. Parking sonar, okay. whatever. Okay, we good? Yeah. The next yeah. part is going to be easy because it's mostly flat. It's starting to get snowy. Those trees are a little concerning. A little bit. A little close. <laughs> like, ah! So here we are heading up. Uh, we're along the ridge line. We've gone about probably another mile into the mountain, mm -hmm. and the snow's already starting to get deeper. And one thing I'm noticing is it's, uh, we're starting to get that ridge down the middle much quicker than I was expecting. We had a lot of warm weather come through and I thought it had melted everything up here. So we have a nice soft layer of snow, but as it's turning out, there's still some of that hard packed ice underneath, uh, which is gonna make things even more difficult as we head up the mountain even more. So will this do better than either the Forerunner or the RAV4? We'll find out. No, wait and see. <laughs> Okay, last Under time we came by this rock, it said Toyota. Now it says Ford for the win. 
camera. I love it. That is awesome. It's like the ongoing battle. I know the feud. <laughs> it's hilarious. Oh, oh okay. Now we have some issue up here. Uh, we oh. have trees. And this does okay. not have any underbody protection. No underbody it? protection. Mm -hmm. None. Okay, okay noted. Let's, let's go move some trees. We just shake the snow off. It might. <laughs> now stand right over there. All right. <laughs> Elevates it slightly. And away we go. Now, right now we're in rock and dirt mode, which should minimize slip. I don't really want a lot of slip because I'm a little afraid that on angles, we're going to slide to the side. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to minimize that. Nice. Camera stole attached. Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> We didn't hear a thud, a thud. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole lot of trees with a lot of snow on them. Mm -hmm. They are looking really heavy. Yeah. So far we're doing fine. Now, don't let the snow from the exterior shots um, lull you into a sense of, you know, as though this is easy because under the snow is a lot of loose rock. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of changes in the shape of the road. It, it really is barely a road right here. And this is where it's looking like it's going to get a little thicker. Oh, yeah. This is the climb right before mm -hmm. the RAV4 got stuck. Exactly. We're just going to have to keep moving here. It's a lot deeper in the middle. Yep. We're going to start rubbing the middle. Of course, rubbing the middle also means oh, it's that thick God. ice, <laughs> that thick snow no. in the middle. It's grinding on the bottom. Let's <laughs> no. maybe put a wheel over on it. Well, That's just the proximity sonars. We're getting close to the trees. And the car's blowing up. There's a whole lot going on. <laughs> okay, here's a little uh, off kilter climb. We're going to mm -hmm. straddle the ditch because I think that makes sense. We'll find out. Yes, it made sense. Now, I have to say this, I'm noticing that this eight speed automatic does a really good job at maintaining a low climb speed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm kind of hovering around one mile per hour, two miles per hour here, and it's working great. So that's the advantage of going with an automatic instead of a CVT. Oh yeah. Oh Lord. <laughs> Clearance is an issue. Eight inches, not quite enough. Oh boy. Gosh. <laughs> I... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look because I don't know if this is, know. I don't know if this is a good idea. That's really hard stuff. Yeah. Let's see. And the snow's going to get deeper the farther Oof. we go. Holy. What I can tell. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Is it like solid? Oh, there you are. It's an, it's an ice cube. It's it is a solid. solid ice cube. Oh, God. <laughs> no. <sighs> <sighs> Dang, I really hate enough. calling this one, well, but that is an ice cube. Yeah. And there's no place to put our wheels. <sighs> That's it. We yeah, are it's... literally dragging the the underside on a block of ice. And that's not very smart. No, to it do. isn't. It isn't. No, I, I think uh, with that we're going to go ahead and end this adventure. Um, <laughs> yeah. ah, ground clearance, serious issue. Yeah. Eight inches, not enough for this kind of a road. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. This has been my co-driver, Carlina Gore. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again <laughs> next week. Bye.